Hi, welcome back. Today our inspiration is going to be Claude Monet, famous and favorite French Impressionist. Um, we loved him because he learned, taught us to paint outside and capturing the light. And today we're going to talk about the series he did the last 30 years of his life in Giverny. Yes, I'm excited because I said that I, in my imagination, I went back there. I was there in, twice, the first time 1989 for, for one day. And then the following year, 1990, I went back and spent a whole week painting in the garden pretty much by myself. Me and Joy, who was seven, uh, got to go there every day and sit on the bank and paint one after another. Joy, Joy laid down on the bridge and painted green circles with pink dots, which is about what we're going to do today. <laughs> My demonstration is a pink dot. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Monet's, um, his Impressionist, how they painted. They painted fast because they were trying to capture the light in what they called a glance. So that's pretty fast. The light changes quickly. So the idea, um, the word a la prima, which is a, um, here's my word for the day, your, your um, vocabulary word is a la prima. It's a Italian, another Italian word, and it means first attempt, or wet on wet, or painting very fast, or painting everything in one session. Um, it was like you didn't, it used to be in the old days, people would, you know, classic training was to paint something and let it dry and then go back and paint it again and in many, many layers. But the Impressionists did the whole thing in one session. So it means that you, they said that the, the top layer, when you put the top layer on, the bottom layer was still wet. And this, that was for oil. It, apply, it applies to watercolor very well because we talk about wet on wet all the time. And the, the water pond just lends itself so much to wet on wet. And so we're also focusing on hard and soft edges. And you'll see the composition that I found for you. Um, has a lot of soft edges in the water. The edges of the water lilies are very, of uh, the water lily pads are very soft. Um, and the, the, there's the crisp edges on the, the, the lily, the flower lily. And you'll see in my demonstration, I kept calling the lily pads, just call them lilies, because, you know, when I'm painting my demonstration, I am in my very right brain, and I'm not thinking very much about what I'm saying, I'm just saying whatever I think of. And um, so I was, I was calling the whole time, I'm talking about painting the lily pads, I'm just calling them lilies, because in my mind, I know they're lily pads, so you have to forgive me for that in the demonstration. Um, people have asked about, to demonstrate one more time, how to do soft edges. So we have a quick demonstration on that. We talk about Monet's 30 years of his life. Um, it was, the history was kind of interesting. He, when he moved to um, Giverny, um, he was had a huge yard which he began to create a garden of just regular flowers. And then later he bought some land that was right next door and it had a pond. And so he started buying things to put in his pond. He bought these expensive, um, very exotic colors of water lilies. And he put them in and then he, then he bought some um, willow trees to hang on the banks and he was trying, he was so interested in painting not just the flowers and the water, but the reflections. And so he created his own reflections. And he, he created basically a huge still life just for himself to paint. And so he did it a lot every day. But he, when he started out, when he first started painting his water pond, he painted the water lilies up close. And, um, when I read about that, I was so excited because I, I wanted to show you them because that's what I want. When I went there, I, I painted them up close. Um, and I love I loved the composition of one water lily and a, a few lily pads um, because of the negative shapes. And so um, 
I couldn't find them. And I found out why, because even though he painted a lot of them, he covered them all up to save canvases, repaint, repaint them over them, so they're gone. But we are going to do it for him. We, we have recreated the scene. Oh, the other thing about why, why he was interested in painting up close is because he was inspired by the Japanese prints. And if you've been to his house, you'll see he has walls and walls covered. The whole kitchen, all the staircases are covered with Japanese prints. So the Impressionists were very interested in them. And mostly it's the design and the composition of every Japanese print. So that's kind of what our um, composition today is based on, based on the design of a Japanese print. I'd like to show you some of uh, the paintings that Monet did at Chivigny. Um, the first one is, well, all of them are sort of like this. They, they sh show the reflections in the water. Um, I was especially excited to discover that some of the shapes that I saw in his paintings on the water were the shapes of the clouds overhead. And so, of course, they're changing as quickly as the light is changing, the clouds are moving, and the weeping willows on the bank are moving, changing. Um, and then there's the wonderful um, reflection of the color of the water lily on the, on the lily pad. Um, and then you'll see how the water affects the color of the lily pads, and there's just so much going on at once. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, um, aspect of nature that he was in, obsessed with for 30 years. Um, I want to talk about um, this demonstration that's coming up. Um, in the beginning, I was trying to draw it on. I had done my, my um, thumbnail sketch and my two-minute thumbnail sketch and my 10-minute value study, which was very helpful. But when I started drawing it on, it must be in my left brain because if you're in your left brain, you're feeling kind of uncomfortable. So I remembered the basics and I suggested it to you and I'll demonstrate it more again. But for this, for now, I want to say how I did a blind contour drawing of the water lily. I looked at the water lily and I drew it with uh, a pencil without looking at the paper, just for about a minute. And you'll see that here. It's very, it has wonderful detail and then it just gets kind of strung out, but that's okay. You're not trying to make it look like anything. You're just observing something and drawing it without looking at the paper. And I'm, I mean, really, after a minute of that, I was in another zone and much happier to be doing them. So then I decided that since I was having trouble on my left brain approach, I would try a right brain approach. So I started out in the very center of the water lily. And um, these, and also the, the blind drawing, showed me the underlying structure of the water lily, rather than just looking at the silhouette and all the points that were driving me crazy. So this is what I kept seeing, um, the oval shape, and then underneath the shape here in the very corner, this from here, this is, this is the basic structure of it. It's a circle with a little triangle at the bottom. So that's what's underneath all of this. There's the circle, the triangle, and then you start attaching the points, the points of the, um, the water, what do you call them? Petals, petals. Welcome to my demonstration of Monet's water lily. Um, as you see, I finally got it drawn on um, with, like I did, and I showed you how to do the, the cradle and then the, uh, the cradle of the triangle down here, and then the um, circular overall shape of it. And then these lovely negative spaces 
of what this is all about. So I'm going to just start off with putting a little bit of pink in here. Actually, I don't need that much because the, the canvas is pink. Hmm. I'll wait on that. But I'll go ahead and start putting in some big masses. And um, what we're going to try to do this a la prima thing is to um, use as few brush strokes as possible. And one, I say two brush strokes or less, which means one. <laughs> so there's one, maybe two. Here's two. See this? Okay. Then you go back and you find some more paint and vary it as you go. This one up here has a little bit of yellow in it. I mean, that's not enough. I need more yellow. Um, I'm just gonna kind of put this around where I want to have it on my brush. Up here is a little bit of green. This is probably kind of a base green. It's already been neutralized. It's um, the combination of yellow and phthalo green and a little bit of cad red light. Trying to decide what to do here. Hmm. Might be a good place to add a little blue to it. And um, go ahead and start pulling out the, the shapes of the thing. True blue. The blue made it darker, but it, um, it's too bright. So we have to keep, in oil painting, it, the neutralization is really important. See how this is, see if this is a better color. Uh, I remember how I was looking at a Monet and I realized that he was painting um, just whatever he had on the brush, he put it somewhere. So even though it may not be the right color, put it someplace else. Maybe wherever you see that's darker, maybe. Okay. We're painting the big masses and we're painting the whole picture at once. <clears throat> and comparing the colors that we have. Um, I would like to get a really good neutral color, not too dark. Okay. Maybe put a little, um, a little bit of lint seal in it. Let's see what that does. Let's try this. Maybe up here. That one was closer. I think that would be okay if it wasn't so bright. You see that you're trying things. And I see how that's slightly more neutralized than that. So that's more the color to reveal. So let's start with this one. This is pretty. And that will put over the ones that we think are a little too bright too dark. I'm going to save some room over here for these la lavender triangles. You can see them, huh? I want to keep that darker right there. I'm glad you have the picture in front of you. You can see what I'm up to. This is really light in here. Let's try that. Let's try giving it really light. But neutral. Put a little pink in the green. Ah, there we go. I put some pink in the green. It makes it a little bit more neutral. That's kind of bright. Wow, this is really talking about color temperature. <laughs> We've been working on light and dark. Now we're talking how bright is it or how neutral is it? Um, we can go back over it later, but I wanted, the trick is to get it as close as you can now. So I'm comparing the different color temperatures of this one is a little brighter. Uh, this one's definitely neutral, more neutral. This is more neutral. So they can't be all the same. Let's see. But this one I think needs to be pretty light and pretty bright. So let's just put that big shape in there. You see, we don't have to keep, um, we don't have to change anything. We just adjust it. And what that means is um, 
I'm going to use the colors that I put on there, even though I've decided on something slightly different. There we go. I still want to get the big masses in right away. I'm tempted to fool around, but to force myself to move on. Fine for that one. This one, maybe this one up here. This one. Wow. Maybe we could, can't get this done all in one sitting. Ooh, like this. <clears throat> and this one, notice how this is more lavender and this one is much lighter. Let's finish this first. Oh, there we go. This is my opportunity to make these petals stand right out. Because they are definitely light against dark. Really, really light. We have to darken this. We may have to darken this later, but for now. I love the line, get it as close as you can and move on. Do not obsess on it. Which we tend to do. Okay. So now let's think about how this is, oh, which one, maybe, maybe this one is slightly cooler, well, I know it's slightly warmer, so let's put some uh, alluvium in there. Let's try that, see what happens. Oh, it's just darker. This is really Monet when I put this mixing, literally mixing on the canvas. Just lay it in there. And then say when you have it on your brush, put it someplace else. Not being picky yet. Yeah. All right. I guess I really see red here. Let's put it in. And that down here too. Definitely red. We're still thinking about shape. This is a kind of a warm reddish shape. I need a little bit more alluvium to get that more of a reddish shape. Might be brighter. Oh yeah, that's just about, that sounds, that's just about the right color for that. Not quite, but it's a good start. Use it. There'll be some, um, a little bit of this color in here. And then maybe we're just doing an impressions painting. And you see from all those, um, Monet water ponds I showed you that they're, they're just a bunch of brush strokes. So just see something that you like and respond with something, which is right now. You can't, you, you know, if you had to paint it really fast, <clears throat> the light's changing, you wouldn't have much time to think. I think that's what we like about the paintings. It looked like they weren't thinking very much. They just kept moving the brush around. What I'm doing. You'd be surprised. I mean, it doesn't look like much now, but when you get back, if you're just responding to the value and the color and the shape, pretty soon you'll have something. Let's see if I have this color. Remember, I said, if you have, while you have the paint on the brush, put it someplace. Okay. 
I do see these little um, warm kind of speckled edges. All of them have that. But this one, this one is definitely more um, lavender. So let's take the color that we've been using and um, add, add a little lavender to it. I'm mixing um, pink and blue. I could make the lavender first, but I'm trying to see here. And then put some of the green in it and see what we get. Let's see what color this is. may not be lavender enough. No, it's not. It's, um, it's too green. So, but we want to keep the thick paint. So we're going to just keep adding more blue and more pink to the mix. And then with anything uh, dark like lavender, red violet, blue violet, you always have to add just a little bit of white to be able to see it. Add a little bit of white. See what color this is. And we don't really know what color it is until we put it down. We say, no, that's not it. It's still very gray, isn't it? And I want it to be much warmer. So I'm going to go back to my measuring again. Maybe I'll even mix another puddle over here. I'm going to have a little bit of green, but I'm going to go ahead and mix a puddle of lavender with my brush that has a little bit of green on it. Aha, this looks much more purple. Watch me. It's too dark. It's, it's the right color, but... And I see what you do is you put it down, you compare what you're looking at. And it looks like it's a little too dark and a little too blue, but it's getting there. So I'm going to add a little more red and a little white, and I think we'll have it. And I'm sure this is what Monet was doing. She was putting things down. And that's the only way you can really do it. I mean, some people try to get the color just right before they put it on, but you really can't do it ever because everything's relative. It's relative to what it's next to. And you can't really see that till you get it down. No, I think it's still too dark. It's getting it. I'm gonna add a little more white to that mix. Where else would I put that? Maybe well, I have it on my brush. I'm going to put it here. This is pretty light. See how there's a little gray um, highlight from the water? I'm literally putting this in now because I have it on my brush. I don't want to waste it. And over here, too, see a little bit of highlight. There's a little bit of highlight from the water. And that's pretty. That's a little dark. Maybe there's a lot of gray in here. Let's put it in. I mean, it's a beautiful color. You might as well use it. Not quite what I need for here, but... This needs more lavender in it. More of that. Maybe we can mix them together. That's a good idea. Let's put this over here. There we go. And see how you can change anything just by mixing on the canvas. More the right color. And then we'll put that over here. Maybe add a little red to it. I'm mixing. I'm literally mixing on this canvas just now. Oh, I see. I see green too. Oh, this is the most yummy, yummy piece here. All these grays, green grays, blue grays, violet. I'm gonna get another brush with some green on it. Here we go. We got some green stuff we were doing. Let's put the green right in here. This is a wonderful heart shape in here. If you've noticed it from the picture that you have, the heart shape right there. Let's put that in. That looks fun. Okay, so now about this, about this time, about this stage of the game, I'm beginning to have fun with this. There's always a little panic in the beginning because um, you never know if you're going to be able to do it or not. Let's keep at it. I'm 
looking down in here. Some of this is sort of that color. They're, they're similar in color, aren't they? These little reflections here. Let's see, what else do we need to do? Hmm. I'm looking at some of the neutral colors in the green. I'm going to have to put them all in eventually. Now I'm mixing on the, on the canvas. A little green heart. Green here. And a little green in here. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I look like I'm just playing around. I am. Putting a little We're gonna have to speed this thing up if it's gonna be a fast painting, right? Okay, is there anything else I can see that I want to put in? All right. You can. All right, let's put the, what's the next little tag, the little tag. Let's fill in some of these holes in here. Okay, so when we put the water in, or should I even say water, I should say the um, dark shape. Dark blue shapes that have the lovely blue green. See, it's got this. I'm putting a little bit of um, phthalo and um, ultramarine together. But it's really a beautiful blue green. Let's see if I can. Uh, this needs a tiny bit of white in order to see it. There we go. Some more blue. I'm going to wash the. I just add a little white to it so I can see it better. Somewhere between the two, isn't it? So we can um, take this color. If I make it any brighter, it won't be as dark. <laughs> we need a little bit more. I'm lightening it a little bit. There we go. Because some of the some of the areas are lighter, like maybe in here is much lighter. And that's a pretty color. Okay, let's do it again now. Um, I'm looking at it. Never take your eyes off the subject matter. Let's put a bit more blue right, in, right on top of that. Mix the blue. You can see this is kind of how Monet was reacting. It was just taking the, the color uh, and mixing it right on the canvas like this. Hmm. This will really help. Um, I want to get those save those little um, These lovely little triangles in here. Oh, I love them. The little echoes of the, those cast shadows or something that we just to die for. 
I really wanted to get more of the uh, water in before I quit. Um, let's just see if we can just put in some of the the dark shape so that you can see how it's going to look. And then we'll have to take a break and look at it. Remember, I can go back and um, while it's still wet, I can keep working on it for quite a while. Right now, I just want to get the darks established. Um, wow, it's so important in here. Let's see here. You try to get the color as close as you can the first time. I want this to be more blue than this. I wanted it blue green, but now I want it to be more blue color. Let's see how I can uh, see how I can paint right over something if I do it thick. That's much better. Um, but see, I didn't see it blue. I saw it, I saw it blue green, but um, now I like the blue better. I put blue right over the green. This is gonna look so nice. Stuffing in here. So you get a feeling for doing this fast, but thoughtful. Not not really sloppy. I don't think you ever did them sloppy. It was just um, responding to what you saw. Maybe this is better here. No, it's too dark. I'm gonna do this one and get this in there so you see the overall shapes of it. All this will make such a difference. make this very dark in here. Down here is so dark. This wonderful triangle here is just over the top. There's a lot of triangles in this composition if you look for them. They're gorgeous. That might be more on the um, probably put the lizard in here. Put lizard right over it, okay? I didn't even take anything off my brush. I'm just going to put a little bit right over it. That is material on the palette, on the canvas, I mean. And that got nice and dark. Well, this is probably darker, too. Let's see if um, some of these accents will really make a difference. Let's see them in here. That's why you don't need black paint. This is almost black. See, all it is is alizarin and uh, blue, but if I put the phthalo green on top of it, it's really going to be black. I want to do a little bit more of this if I have time. Hmm. 
you see how dark this is against the water? The water is already very dark, but this uh, reflection is even darker than that. But it's also warmer. This is very alizarin against blue. So that's a very good example of warm and cool, although they're close in value, um, they're definitely different colors. Um, play that up. A little nice shadow in here. And I'm making this darker now too. You see how important the darks are. But this triangle goes like that. Crucial point. That one, this one. See my palette? I'm taking the paint off of the palette now. I think if we put in a couple of aspects with um, the bright pink, let's try that. Let's just try putting in a little bit of bright pink, although this is not as bright as I would like it. It's not as bright as that. I have to come back with some um, pure alluring. <clears throat> Might do with that one. Because that's not at all bright enough. Try this. This is definitely pink. Let's see if we can get it pinker by not adding white to it. This is interesting because if you add white to it, you, um, you neutralize it even more. So it's hard to get it bright. But I wanted to show you before we stop um, how, how important the lights and darks are going to be here. I don't like that light at all. So what could happen when you put white? or almost white. It's going to be so pale. Okay. And that was what I loved about this composition. The top of the water, water lily is a whole big white shape. So you definitely want to see what that's going to look like before we start. You see how much time I spent drawing And Monet, he, I, I now know why he gave up painting the close-ups. Because he painted, when you paint from a distance like that, all these uh, water lilies are just little dots of color. Hmm. And you can still, still do it kind of loose. It's never going to be like it was, like it is in the picture. That would be more pink. Okay, all right. Okay, you won't really know what it looks like until it um, comes to this one. This is going to have a lot more color in it than I have time for right here. Let's do this. Put a big blob of yellow right there. Yellow green. This is definitely yellow green. Big blob of yellow green. I want this to be really bright. It's not coming out that way. Hmm, because I have stuff on my brush. So 
Hmm, I already have the dark. I just need to put in this kind of a, I don't know. <clears throat> it's sort of this color, but it's got all this stuff in here. It's kind of a lizard, isn't it? Let's try that. Let's try a lizard like I was doing up here. Let's see. I don't see color this way. Yeah. I'm not putting it on thick right now. I'm just trying to scumble it in. See if I can get the right color lavender. I think we're going to have to stop because I need to get back and look at it. I don't know. There's a lot of detail I'd like to put in. But the, the goal in the beginning is to uh, cover the canvas with the big masses. <clears throat> Get that. Oh, it's here. There's a dark, there's some water there. I'm not getting <clears throat> it's the water. I'm just covering that up with water. saying that and I do one more thing. <laughs> I want to um, <clears throat> just put a little bit of accent in here. There's some bright little accents on the, on the flower. There's some yellow accents and some red accents. And maybe you can take this red and um, put some of the lines around the top of it without if you pick up the color behind it, it's going to neutralize it. So we'll start maybe with right here. There we go. There's a way, there's going to be a way to make this bright, even though <clears throat> they don't have such a color in oil. All right, I quit for now. That's a good beginning.